Namaste, welcome uh, to Kathmandu. My name is Jerome Vandenberg. I'm the country director for the Nepal Trust in Nepal. The mission of the Nepal Trust is basically to help the Nepali people to help themselves in the, the aid delivery and to provide them uh, the knowledge, capacity and uh, necessary skills to provide a better economic and social structure within their communities. And this is done in partnership with the local communities, but at the same time we try to facilitate them uh, in different fields that actually can enhance their local livelihoods in the fields of primary health care, renewable energy, uh, heritage preservation, income generation and the like. The goals for the liaison track uh, in the spring of 2011 were mainly to um, re-engage with the local communities in Bhumla uh, to see how we can expand our current health program and to see what kind of uh, communities would tentatively be interested to work with us uh, for a longer term partnership in delivery of primary health care. And in order to do so, we had a kind of recon mission in which uh, several representatives of the Nepal Trust traveled to Humla and visited several places and started uh, initial discussions with the community, uh, what are the interests, the, the basic needs, and how we can complement each other's efforts uh, for the upcoming years to expand our program. In addition to the Renewable Energy Service Center, which aims to provide vocational training as a kind of social enterprise to educate the local people uh, with the capacity and knowledge to sustain their own community assets. We also recognize uh, water and sanitation as a crucial part for um, human existence. And especially now that the resource becomes more scarce and a lot of health related issues are deriving from uh, poor hygiene and sanitation measures, uh, the Nepal Trust also uh, is looking into the expansion of its program into the water and sanitation sector. And other programs that we have lined up is basically the expansion of the health program. It's not only the, the quantitative uh, infrastructure in terms of expansion, but also the quality of service delivery. And this includes the, the capacity building of local health workers to train them, uh, to provide better logistical systems and to create public-private partnerships with the government to show to the local people also that we don't create a parallel system next to the efforts from the government but that we actually try to complement those efforts and can work hand in hand and combine efforts and budgets to provide better delivery. Uh, the normal activities will surely continue like the guest house and the social enterprise and income generation activities but also we aim to establish more micro hydro plants and solar. We've also uh, been working uh, more on the tourism side of things, the Great Himalaya Trail. And for the upcoming years, we continue the capacity building of local entrepreneurs in terms of uh, lodge management, waste management, but also to give cook training, guide training, and to establish master plans for the, dif the different districts where we work in. One of the major areas that the Nepal Trust has been working on is the community health. And uh, Although uh, the overall the health, the, the condition of the health uh, services in Hamla is in a very, very poor state, but at least in Simicor there is a district hospital and there are some other organizations working on health. But in the remote areas, people have nowhere to go if they need any health services. And Nepal Trust has been actually providing a big uh, help in actually providing those services in the communities. But until now, we have been actually providing we have been building health posts in many places, we have been training people, we have been uh, providing medicines and others, but we have now realized that there is a great need of an increased level of community participation, such as if we have to build a health post, they can provide with the local resources available, stones and wood and local human resources. And if there is an issue of the continuation of the health post, they, the, the health management committee has to be strong and it has to actually support the health worker in, in running and actually making sure that the health process is sustained. The services provided by the government is very poor and uh, not managed well. And that's why uh, in order to aid the government as, and, and, and to help the communities, we have received a number of requests and we have seen that there is a great need. So we might in future, Nepal Trust will have to, if the resources allow, build more, more health posts as we actually walked along the trail, we saw that deforestation was a major issue. 
And the way that the, de that the deforestation could be stopped is to actually establish renewable energy plants in, in, in those villages so that the forest can be conserved. There's also an increased level of hygiene and, and sanitation in the villages and also the children and men can work in the evenings and mornings. The Great Himalayan Trail Pilot Project was designed with the objective of uh, promoting the remote uh, trekking and tourism destinations while also provide a new and a, a, a fresh trekking destination for tourists. One of the major uh, activities of the GST project was training the local entrepreneurs along the trekking trail. And during this trek, actually, I met a number of uh, tourism entrepreneurs that participated in the training. I think they have made huge improvements. And uh, the improvements include increased level of hygiene and sanitation, and uh, the, the facilities look more clean. And most of them, actually, they didn't have toilets in the past. Also, in the way they actually uh, welcomed and presented themselves, so there was a huge improvement. We're sitting in what is the northwest corner of Nepal, a part of the world where there's no roads, everything moves on the back of an animal or the back of a man. It's a very, very poor part of the world. And here the Nepal Trust is working to raise those standards. One of my roles is to come out regularly to oversee what's happening and ensure that donor money is well accounted for and spent properly in the field. We're at the stage now where it's very important the community accepts the responsibility for the sustainability of the programmes and starts making a financial contribution to our work. And so we've been meeting with the community leaders, explaining we'll introduce registration fees, um, fees for prescriptions, all of which will be at a very low cost. We're very pleased on this trip when we stopped at the clinic in Yaobang to be met by a group of local doctors, all wearing their smiles and their white coats. The programme runs in conjunction with our senior healthcare workers and the local school teachers. The children will come on a Friday evening or Saturday morning to participate in the programme, which is a formal structured programme, teaching them all the basics of hygiene, healthcare and symptoms of some illnesses. And the idea is that when they go back into their communities, there are eyes and ears. If we sustain this programme over a number of years, we would think after four or five years, we really will have started building a message into the community of the importance of hygiene and the fundamentals of good, good health care. Another important area for us has been developing small micro-hydro or solar power electrification schemes which we put into villages. These aren't large-scale schemes, they're small, relatively easy to maintain systems um, and systems which um, allow basically us to introduce lighting into the community. So a village is typically 20, 30, big village, 40 houses. So with a 5, 10 kilowatt micro hydro scheme, we're able to provide lighting for these houses. When you introduce electricity for the first time into a community, it's amazingly transformational. It allows light to read by at night. And in an area where it's basically subsistence agriculture, all the people in the daytime, in the working day, have to be out looking after the crops, tending to the animals. So we're going to improve a lot with studying, education, reading. Really it's going to be after it's dusk and you need lights to see by. As you walk around the villages you see the young girls beating the millet into flour, using poles, while they're hammering away into hollowed out stones where the grain is put. Backbreaking work, very hard work but work which can be done in a matter of a fraction of a time with a modern electric grinder. And also with electricity, you can recharge batteries. When you can recharge batteries, you can think about having satellite TV, mobile telephones. Working in partnership is one of the fundamental themes we have. Working in partnership with the community, so not to have a cultural dependency, and working in partnership with other organisations so that we're all coordinated and achieving the maximum. So for example, in our sustainable tourism project, we're working very closely with the SNV organisation. Well, our lifeblood actually is volunteers. Volunteers help us do things. Um, volunteers in the UK to actually help us organise the work of the Nepal Trust, to help us with fundraising, to raise funds for the work which we do out here. But also volunteers to come out into the field with us to engage in our programmes, either our healthcare programmes, which obviously is ideal for nurses, dentists, doctors, but also our um, community programmes, electrification programmes, our building of the health clinics, um, our organising of the treks to, treks to build clinics, treks to electrify, 
all of that. It's a great, a great experience for people. We are uh, in Homla for our internship for two months and we are visiting various health posts from Nepal Trust. One is in Torpa. They just rebuilt it because it was destroyed uh, during the Maoist insurgency. We enjoy to live together with the local people in their houses, to eat their local food and the people are very friendly. So Umla is the best way and the most easiest as well as the most uh, uh, fantastic trekking trail leading to Mount Kailas in Tibet. That's one biggest, one big asset for Umla. But in addition to that, we also have a number of uh, trekking trails because it's unaffected uh, by modern you know, development or also. We have mountains, we have traditional villages that have preserved their tradition and culture. So tourists can get a new experience as well. But here, if the tourists come, you have the opportunity to interact with the real communities who actually have authentic and, and, and ancient tradition and things like that. So it's a, it's a new feeling for tourists also. We aim to have a pilot project in Kaski district, which is outside Humla but it's a water supply project for about 13,000 people, which is a major uh, task, but we hope uh, soon we can start with that. Over the 10 years I've been involved in the Port Trust, we've built seven or eight micro-hydro schemes, we've introduced five or six solar uh, lighting schemes, and our plans going forward will be to probably double that number over the next five, five to 10 years. And I would hope by the end of the uh, next 10 years, we'll see most of the communities up in the Canali Valley um, electrified.